G'day YouTube. So I went a bit slack with the video this week. Uh, I was absolutely inundated with getting the website launch up and going. A huge thank you to everyone that bought plants for that release. Uh, it's made some great space in the greenhouse, which I will eventually be able to fill up with more seedlings and cuttings as I get around to doing some repotting when I find some time. But the purpose of this video is I wanted to talk about uh, fertilizing Nepenthes. Now this this is a video I've been considering not doing, thought about doing, and keep toing and throwing, but I do get asked about it a lot. And the answer is yes, I do fertilize my Nepenthes, and I have for many years. Uh, I do think it makes a huge difference, though I will say right now, if you are thinking of doing it, uh, even if you follow exactly what I do, start lightly and slowly build up from there and see what works in your conditions. Everyone's conditions are going to be different. My potting media might be different to yours, my watering schedule, the temperatures in my greenhouse, everything that it can affect the fertilizers and how your plants react uh, will, will be discovered on your own. Well, what, works, sorry, what works for your greenhouse and your conditions will be based on your own discoveries, basically. Um, that being said, I will touch on what I use, when I use it, how often, everything like that, which will get, might give you a good baseline on where to start. I'd probably suggest, you know, maybe starting at about half of what I'm using or my recommendations. Give your plant, give you know, one or two plants to fertilise. Let them settle. See how they react and go from there, decide whether you want to you know, add a little bit more, hold on that schedule, however it works for you. Um, I'll also say, if you're looking as a fertilizer to save a sick looking plant or a struggling plant, generally this is not the case. In fact, when I'm fertilizing the greenhouse, if something is not looking happy, I generally do not fertilize. Uh, there is a few points where I will, um, some light yellowing yellowing through the leaf uh, it's hard to describe but I'm not sure I've got anything showing it at the moment uh, I think maybe on my Raja down there could be some signs of it but it was a sign it's a, um, a lack of magnesium and other uh, sort of those base minerals which is the main thing I think that the plants actually take from the fertilizers but the uh, fogger going off. It's been an absolutely stinking hot day here in Sydney. I think it's 34 degrees. It's been dry. My humidifier ran out. It went through 60 litres of water today trying to keep the humidity up in here. Um, so it's been trying to play catch up since then. So hopefully it's not too foggy for you. Now as we know, the Penthes do get most of their food and all carnivorous plants for that matter through insects that they catch and eat themselves. Uh, and they'll take that in through the pitchers. And generally speaking, that's most of the nutrients that plant will need. But what you don't have in the, that you will have in the wild is breaking down plant matter and all the other stuff that is in their media. Well, I'm not sure if media is the right word, but whatever they're growing in naturally, there's breaking down leaves, sticks, everything and that that in the soil yes it's nutrient poor but it's not nutrient dead now the stuff we use whether it be cocoa uh, cocoa chips cocoa peat sphagnum moss uh, akadama all of these are very nutrient poor which is great is why they can grow in it but i do feel especially over time as plants been in a pot for years and years uh, it can sap any nutrients that are in there out and that's when you'll start to see the plant go backwards. It doesn't happen quickly, it's a slow, long-term thing, but even just some light fertilization time to time will give those roots the, uh, the energy they need and, and keep your plant happy for years to come. So I'll give you a run through of what I, what I use and when. I might actually be lazy and take a seat for this part. Uh, 
so if you're in Australia, you'll know all these, well, most of these products. Um, in the US, anywhere else in the world, I'm not sure the comparative. Maybe uh, Maxi might be quite similar to our Power Feed. I haven't looked into Maxi much because you just can't get it here, so I didn't see the point in researching it that much. Uh, you got your Osmo coat here, which are your little prells. I think everyone everyone's used this, whether it be for other garden plants or all the nepenthes. Sea soil, which is more of a soil conditioner um, rather than a fertilizer, and the great white beneficial bacteria. Now, I probably should, might have helped if I had uh, read the sea soil before beforehand I actually I personally haven't been using this on my plants um, but I know a lot of people have and I am uh, planning on giving it a test and see how it goes but I think it's it'll add more to the um, ability for plants to take up their nutrients which I've been using the great white for so I think Trifford Park down in Melbourne suggests uh, two litres sorry two millimeters or it might be four milliliters per liter of water uh, to water through your naps um, so I won't touch too much on that but I do think this would be beneficial if you are growing plants here in Australia or if you can get it elsewhere I'm not 100% sure uh, power feed is probably one of my main the main ones I use now I, I've used it up as high as four mil, four milliliters per liter of water, just water directly through the media of the pots. And I've seen great success with that, especially smaller plants. I seem to be able to push seedlings up to a good size and get them past that risky small stage quite quickly with it. Now I am dropping down to probably about two milliliters now, just because I found it was killing Killing my uh, my sphagnum moss a lot and give me a lot of troubles with that, uh, which you can see over here. Some of it's come coming back, but other parts aren't looking good. Down here it does seem to look a lot nicer through my highland section there. Um, I should actually touch. I should actually touch on if you're growing in a terrarium or a grow tent where you can't water heavily, I'd be a lot more cautious on how you fertilize the roots. I'm in a greenhouse here, I'm outside. Um, after I fertilize a day or two later, I can come back through and I'll flush all my pots. I'll give a really heavily watering, water pouring out of the pots and flush that water from the media. If you're in a terrarium or a grow tent, you may have to move, take the plants outside to do this. It might be a lot harder. Uh, it could be worth it to you though. That's a decision I'll leave up to you guys. Uh, you can also fertilize a lot lighter, uh, which will mean you don't have to do it as regularly. Um, I'm planning on building a terrarium and a highland fridge shortly. So I'll figure out what I'm doing there. I may do a new video down the track on what I figured out to use in there. Back to the fertilizers. This stuff's great. It's just sea. It's a seaweed uh, base and fish base uh, fertilizer. It's natural. It's I'm assuming it's organic. Couldn't tell you. Yep, organically based fertilizer. And uh, yeah, I haven't had any problems using it. Uh, so I will continue to use this regularly. Uh, the other main one I use is the Osmocote. Um, I've used just your standard, um, I think it's called all-purpose, all I used for quite some time. I did pick around, that one had a, um, a wetting agent in it, which I blew, believe were the, the blue prells. Yes, these are called prells. Um, so I didn't tend to use that. But with these, it's, you know, less is more. So the seedling pots, those are... 68 mil pots and if you've bought seedlings from me recently these would be the size pots that arrive in you might have seen one or two of these on the surface 
and that's all I use is that per pot every six months or so to be honest I've been quite lazy with it obviously as you go up in pot size I may go three of them in a uh, in a hundred mil pot and then I base it off the plant as it um, you know down the track things like truncata can take a lot more fertilizer than most uh, I was just looking at saying I've got this uh, new plant arrived today it's a really nice uh, Ame Vicio Babigio which I think is going to be an absolutely stunning plant once it settles in but I haven't got as rad as fertilizing it yet so that's in a 200 mil hanging basket and that's all that's about all I'll go for this and as you can see just spread throughout the media that I'll, I will use the power feed on this uh, once in a while as well I, I chose the, the cactus and succulent one purely based on if you can see there is the urea content which is what I believe is uh, absolutely terrible for carnivorous plants uh, this being at 3.8% uh, was the lowest I could find in the Osmocote uh, the orchid, which I used for quite a while before this, is 7.6, and I think from there, went uphill quite fast. Uh, so I made an executive decision to try and avoid that as much as I could. So if I'm soaking wet here, I went down, I'm lucky enough to live just up the road from the beach, so I've been down for a swim to cool down after work, and... Now it's actually more enjoyable sitting in the greenhouse at a nice 24 degrees and it's still 30 degrees outside uh, even though it's getting dark. Uh, so you can see here this is the uh, well you can notice the yellowing that there is some red in there which I, was uh, was light burn I tried to push the lights a bit higher than I could and paid for that with, a, with some burnt leaves but the yellowing there, uh, uh, plant microbiologist, uh, by, by chance, he put me onto the fact that it was probably lacking magnesium and possibly calcium, which I've got that potted in uh, Akadama, an Akadama mix and it is completely neutral on anything like that. So, especially if you're using mixes like that, and I believe cocoa chips as well, they will actually draw calcium uh, away from your plant so you do need to add it you should or you should be adding it to the media uh, this is something I've only learned recently even though I've been using it for quite some time now but it does seem to uh, pay effect because as you can tell you've got a couple of leaves that that was actually drying out hence the curling I had to get this into a bigger pot it was completely root bound but since I um, since I gave this a fertilizer, just gave it a, uh, a power feed mix, it's come back really well. And the new leaves are looking much happier. So I think it definitely was the problem. It's gone into a bigger pot now, shouldn't dry out, should be happier for quite some time. My uh, smaller one next to it is overdue for a repot. I'll do a bit of a, a plant show off while I'm in here. Beautiful big Raja picture there. There's another one hiding down there. And I think, I'm not sure if you'll see it, right at the back there, there's a new one coming. Now, if you are growing in a greenhouse, oh, sorry, in a, a grow, see if I can find it. Yep. Sorry, that was a bit close up with my, my chin there. Oh, just step outside. The other thing you can do is you could use the same power feed mixture or even the Osmocote pellets drop straight into the pitch the uh, the pitchers themselves um, a lot of people do, do this with old dying pitchers it can it can melt the pitcher particularly if you overdo it but just one what I've got around here one prill in an old older pitcher uh, that's a picture of my lowly eye VCI, 
you know, something like that, or just starting to get a bit, bit second rate. Got lots of very dead pictures, but no, uh, nothing great to show you for a, oh, there you go. It's on a Peltata Jacqueline, eh? As they start to fold up, I believe the theory is once they've uh, caught enough prey, uh, the, the top, the peristome doesn't need to be as waxy anymore, so it lets the top dry off. But, let's see if we can see inside here. Ooh, wait some, there we go, some light. As you can see, that is full of juices. And that's all nutrients that the plant can take up from this lower part of the pitcher. So that, that's a perfect opportunity to drop a, an Osmocote Prel, or you can use the same uh, power feed mixture, so it's getting completely fogged out in here. The same power feed mixture into those pitchers. I will also feed seedlings with, uh, you can use the Osmocote in the pitchers, but if they do get, sorry, if they're still too small, a uh, syringe just from a chemist with a, I believe they call this a, pl a plunge needle. I think, oh actually I got these off eBay. I think they're used for refilling uh, printer cartridge, ink cartridges. These are fantastic for getting right in on, uh, let's see if you can find something small. Yeah, little tiny pictures, maybe like this Aristolacoides. You can actually get right inside, give a few drop cow feed or whatever fertilizer you've decided with into the pitcher and that'll stop you needing to wash the media as much. Uh, I think that's all I can think of to touch base on on fertilizing. Well, I suppose actually the, the other option you have is if, if you've got a smaller collection is you can go and catch a handful of bugs and drop them in your pictures yourself. But as you can see here, I've got a few too many plants to start thinking about trying to catch enough insects to go around and feed all of these. And as you've seen, my collection continues outside. The outside uh, Nepenthes do catch a lot more bugs. Uh, Chris Summer hasn't quite kicked in here. We haven't had the flies and the, the mosquitoes that I usually get in the greenhouse. So I st am still fertilizing quite a lot. But yeah, I think that's that'll be it for tonight. Uh, happy growing and if you're liking the content, please hit the subscribe button, like, share, get it around, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.